Hey, it's Cindy J. Drake here, and I'm about to be on the online prosperity show run by Prosper, and I can't tell you how lucky you are if you ever get the chance to work with Prosper. Now, the reason you want to watch this show is because we're talking about business, things that are going to make you successful in business, and how you could get some help if you're finding it a struggle. Don't miss out. See you soon. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And, and today, I've brought you the business coach and mentor, Cindy Drake. Cindy, how are you doing, my love? I'm fantastic, Prosper. Now I'm chatting with you. I love your energy. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's been a long day and a hot day in Melbourne. I hope we're going to be able to sustain that. Now, obviously, the people that are watching this show, uh, Cindy, are people that are actually, first of all, struggling with their cash flow. And they do not, um, you know, they haven't been working within their business. They've been literally working on their business and they can't strike a balance between their personal life and whatever it is that they're trying to produce there. And they're also struggling with the relationships, um, you know, that can either bring in more business for them and also nurture them for R&R when they get back home. So in a nutshell, they're trying to get a business that's actually profitable and they can actually enjoy working in it. So we're hoping that with the value that you can bring to the show, you'll be able to Give us the nuts and bolts on how they can actually have an efficient and successful business that is based on models, on strategies, and also, um, you know, structure that you have brought your clients, um, you know, from the four countries that you've lived in and all the testimonials that I've been looking at on your website. There. Now, obviously, if I could say this any better, then we wouldn't need to have you on this show. Tell us a little bit about yourself there, Cindy, and um, what your business really is all about. Sure. Um, first of all, thank you very much, Prosper, for the opportunity to come and chat here with you and the many different businesses, business owners here. Um, so starting out in business started out when I was a teenager with mum and dad in the business. So I was about 13 years old because um, back then everyone in the family just did what they needed to, um, especially when you had a business going as well. So we, um, mum and dad had a petroleum business and it was a wholesale and a retail. So we got to um, serve clients petrol, I guess, at the service station while dad was delivering fuel out to the other service stations in the big tanker. So understanding the importance of... Um, how to make someone feel good. You know, people come through and just want to fill up the car and get going and um, making people smile just at those opportunities that you had back then was probably a, one of my greatest learning lessons was when you smile, you could see that it was like when you're yawning, it was contagious. Other people would end up smiling with you and feel good and actually enjoy coming and having a chat with you when they fill up the car. So understanding customer service and making people feel good was really a great learning lesson back then. Um, and then seeing how, you know, the business had a real impact in the family and kind of connected us even stronger as a family unit. But um, dad was always doing everything in the business and running it. Mum and I were kind of doing things here and there, but it was dad who knew everything that was going on. And even though he was a smart guy and extremely hard worker, um, the business really just got too much in the end and we ended up losing our family because of it, which was really sad. Um, it kind of impacted everyone, everyone in its own way. Um, but I went out, I got an accounting degree and cause that's what you do to have a nice safe job. <laughs> Boring. Um, no offense there to the accountants. There's um, a job there for everyone, but it wasn't my type of job. So I went overseas to try and make it more interesting and learn a hell of a lot overseas working in Kosovo and Bosnia. And um, I guess it was going back to family roots as well, because we've got a Croatian background. Seeing how the, um, how the cultures out there um, worked in the ways that they did and respected each other. And you didn't, you know, it was after the war out there and we set up the financial frameworks there for businesses um, that did microfinance. So we were helping rebuild lives out there with tiny little loans that were supposed to be for business. But in the early days, it never really went into the business. 
it was really about helping people's well-being. And then after they were able to, it was mostly women actually, because the war was there for five years. So a lot of the men had gone and it was about empowering women to be able to support their families and be able to have um, a business to help them financially. So it was about the third or fourth loan. You'd actually see them reinvesting that loan into the business. And by the fourth loan, it was all generally all for the business. So it was amazing to see, I guess, the microeconomic influences that you had even um, in that kind of environment of helping people with money and fueling them in their business. And the social impact that you had, the repayment rates that we had over there in that business were ph phenomenal. They're about 99.3% repayment rate because you had the social aspect where there were five women in a loan together and if one of those people couldn't um, repay that loan, the other four women had to pay for it. So there was a lot of social pressure there for people to really be committed and engaged to make the repayments back. And I think that was probably another really strong lesson I learned in terms of working with people, um, whether it's your clients or your staff, you know, your external clients or your internal clients. It's a social impact that you can have with people to empower them to achieve great things. Absolutely. Oh, again, Prosper. <laughs> no, that's fine. Absolutely. Those are simple yet effective strategies that you're actually talking about. First of all, I want to just pull back the curtain a little bit and um, thank you for your amazing story right there. So when you were 13, you learned how to smile, mm -hmm. right? And that changed uh, pretty much everything else. But obviously, back in that time, that, that was simple yet effective and people normally buy from those they know, like, and trust, okay? So obviously, if you smile, then you create that universal language of people wanting to like you. But you might have um, people in our day-to-day, -day, um, you know, activities where they don't necessarily have to smile in front of a customer because everything is done over the internet. Um, yeah. is, it, is it a simple yet effective strategy that you might also help people to substitute um, you know, for the smile, um, you, you know, in order for them to still convey that, um, you know, message that they really want to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Yes. So, you know, communicating with people is mostly physiology. Um, so over 50% of it is physiology. So if you know that you're going to speak with a client, um, being in that right frame of mind will take you a long way. The words you say is only 7% of it, but the tonality of how you're saying it and how you actually feel about being with that person is going to affect the message that you have with the person. So if you know that you're having a bad day, I strongly encourage, do a bit of exercise, put some happy music on, even, you know, clapping. Try clapping, Prosper. When you're clapping, that's actually something you do to celebrate. And you smile and you feel good. You feel a lot better. So you're changing the state that you're in. So having control over your physiology when you're about to connect with a client will have a huge impact with how you build rapport with people. Absolutely. Well, that actually would change, first of all, the state and also break the pattern of, um, you know, people just thinking they are working behind the scenes and um, their clients are not actually seeing them, which will actually increase their profits and also in turn increase their cash flow because like we said earlier on people do buy from those they know like and trust now while your family was running the petroleum business and everything else was going on perfectly there i also had a little story when i was growing up in zimbabwe we did not have petrol in the petrol stations and we used to buy petrol off of trucks that way yeah that way passing by and um you know so it sort of brought me back a little bit brought me back <laughs> but you did uh, mention that, um, you know, uh, members of your family got really busy and that then disrupted the work-life balance. That must have been um, a heavy toll on your family and you might have gotten a few life and business lessons off of that. What would you, um, you know, encourage the modern day hustling entrepreneur that's out there doing 81 hours because 80 is from amateurs any, these days, um, doing 81 amateur, um, hours and um, yet they have a family to look after and their kids are growing uh, in the process. I'm not mentioning any names here. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> 
CrossFit is such a good point because, you know, we have so much information available to us through so many different media streams now. Um, Facebook is a major distraction for us throughout the day. Social media is a major distraction for people throughout the day. Um, we're, we're receiving information in so many different ways, distracted. Um, being really focused, understanding where you're going is such a crucial um, aspect for understanding where you're going is a really big thing. There's so many business owners that we work with. When you ask them, what's the three-year goal or what's the five-year goal, they can't articulate what they're trying to achieve in the business. All they're doing is running, 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 but they don't know where they're going. So when you suddenly stop and get a moment to think about what are you really trying to achieve and what do you need to be focused on, it'll change your perspective. It's like you go into your car and you know that you need to, um, you need to go to Woolworths. You need to get some shopping done. But if you don't know which Woolworths you're going to, if you don't know what you need at the shopping, is there any point of you sitting in the car? It's kind of the same in business. <laughs> it's like, um, so if you're in business, the main question is why do you have the business and what are you were trying to achieve out of it? You know, we all say that we want more money, we want more time and um, more, more time with our family, more time in the business to get stuff done. But what is it we're trying to achieve? When you get clarity about where you're trying to go and what you're trying to do, I think you get some really good core principles about what you need to focus on because everyone has 24 hours and seven days in the week. But it's where you're spending your time and energy. We have lots of crises going that on today because we're reacting. We're not um, being proactive in terms of planning of where we need to go and what we're doing. So once you do get a clear idea of where you're going, it gives you a great shift for being careful about what you spend your time on and what's the real priorities. Absolutely. When you talked about driving to Woolworths, I just forgot that I was meant to go and buy milk, but um, <laughs> that's, not, that's, that's another story right there. But obviously when you're driving in your car, like you say, um, um, obviously this is uh, related to the viewer right now, because when you're driving your car, the windshield is actually bigger than your rear view mirror so that if you have clarity of where you are actually going, it makes things a whole lot easier. Can you imagine if you only had this little to see where you're going and a whole big uh, mirror at the back so it wouldn't work perfectly yes. like that. Now, just t taking you back again to your ladies in Bosnia and, and um, uh, Kosovo there, yeah. you know, that, that's quite interesting because uh, it did touch a few chords, me coming from a third world country and, um, you know, having that um, you know, you know, um, you know, set up where people can actually be helped. It tells a whole big story about accountability where you say the ladies were in groups of four. And if one of them did not turn up and pay, um, you know, they then, um, you know, let down the whole group. Now as entrepreneurs, even in the modern age or in the first world, we are always maybe lone rangers or we're working just by ourselves. How important is it, um, you know, to be accountable, maybe first of all, to yourself, to your, to what your goals are and to what your clarity is and how does a mentor or a coach help with that aspect of accountability? Yes. So when you're in business, it's so easy to just get caught up in, you know, whatever demands are coming in your way, trying to make the money, trying to pay the bills, just trying to keep up with everything. But um, being really a great leader for your team, if you've got people on board, that culture and leadership really starts with you. You can't give that away to people. People are going to look up for you for having that really strong leadership. Um, having the goals in place so that staff know where they're going, what they're doing, um, really helps people stay accountable. It makes it really clear what you want them to be accountable for. Um, having rules in place and behaviours of how you're going to play the game of business that you're in um, as a team, how you're going to do that. Um, I guess clear, really clear action plans around um, all the different components that you need to do to achieve the goals. And then um, I think a really good one is risk. In business, you do need to take risk. 
but helping your staff understand where are the healthy risk decisions where they can take some risk and can't take risk. Um, having a bit of a risk management guide is really useful. And then keeping your team included. Inclusive behaviour really is inspirational for your team to give you the best that they can within a business. And that can be overwhelming and um, I guess understanding how to do that in your business when you're learning about business to start with. A business coach can really give you some steps and structure for how to set your business up, but also how to lead your team. And I guess what I just went through now was really around creating a great team environment and culture where people can really thrive. Absolutely. But yeah, I guess the, some of the structure that we go through with clients is helping them how to go from chaos to control. And we do that by walking through, you know, um, what are the goals that we can help them get really clear direction of where they're going, um, how they manage their time. Time is a really big one. You touched on it before. Getting really good strategies in place, like a default diary of how they're going to spend the time so that they know what they're focusing on. I guess um, numbers that they need to be really focused on. Numbers is a crucial one in business. And um, I guess there's a bit of a business formula around numbers and how to create more sales and how you do that. Um, and then the other one is service. Are you providing the right service for your clients? Are you filling their need or are you trying to create a need? And then when you, you do get the need formula right, is it, um, is it something that they're really happy with or are you just providing an average service? Um, so there's quite a lot of um, process that you go through with going from chaos to control. And then it's how can you prepare your business for growth? So that would kind of involve, I guess, the marketing. Now that you've got your service right, then how do you market that? Get more clients coming through. Um, how do you create the right team environment so that they can follow systems and procedures to deliver what they need to for you? And then what are the systems that you can have in place to make sure that you can maximise the, um, the automation where possible to bring in some real efficiencies? And then when you kind of had that kind of structure and base as a formula, you really get some synergy in your business to free up some time so that you can focus and then work on the next steps of where you want to go. Absolutely. All right. So what can people then expect, um, you know, when they engage you as their mentor or their coach? Yes. So we go through um, a bit of a, I guess, a bit of an alignment workshop to sit down and work out where is the business at, um, what kind of parts of the business structure have they got in place and what parts should we fill? It's like a big bucket of water. You know, you've got your bucket there, but you want to make sure that you fill all the gaps so that as you fill it with sales, you keep all that sales coming through. Um, so do a bit of an alignment process, understand where they're at, what they're wanting from the business and then bring the business coach, um, in on track with that as well. So everyone's aligned with where we're going. And then we set up fortnightly sessions. Um, we do, sorry, do nine day plans so that we know where we're going in 90 days with our goals. And then we do fortnightly sessions to make sure that we're moving and progressing towards our goals and addressing any challenges. And a lot of it is mindset with um, the smaller business owners. A lot of it is mindset and helping them get through some of the beliefs or the values that they might be having um, to help them take it to the next step and get out of the comfort zone. It's really hard moving out of your comfort zone. So being, having someone around to help you through those times can really, really be a big help. And then we have different training sessions that we might have throughout the months, throughout the year on various topics like marketing or sales or um, automation systems, various different topics that you have. So it's kind of an educational process throughout the time that we have together and getting really clear about where we're going and how we can get there. Absolutely. Obviously, if you're watching this show right now, you can actually tell that the 20 years that um, Cindy has had an experience helping businesses in over four countries to actually create systems and build teams so they can actually achieve success. Now, how can people, um, you know, get a hold of you so that they can, um, you know, move from chaos to control their Cindy? Sure. Um, I have a website up, which is um, cindyjdrake.com.au. And we have, um, I guess, mobile number is 04272-14502. And I guess the website's probably the best place to get in touch. And you can make an appointment online. 
and we can have a chat and see how things are going for your business. See if there's anything we can do. So not everyone's right for coaching. I guess a good thing to understand is that a um, mentor talks for you from their business experience. A coach will kind of take you from where you are now to where you want to go. And a consultant will come in and help, um, get, just get the work done that you need done but they won't really um, help you so much in understanding how to get there. So when you're thinking of getting some support on board, I guess it's good to understand what your expectations are for the help that you're needing in your business right then and there. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I would just recommend them to watch this uh, show because of the nuggets that you've dropped in. And as you can see, Cindy is actually passionate about helping businesses like yours to actually succeed Um she is being strategic and really keeping an eye. First of all, you notice on time management and actually using your resources within your business effectively. And, you know, with time, um, you really want to grow your business to a larger corporation. So like she says, there's three different sections that you really need, either a consultant, a coach or a mentor, and she'll be able to, you know, assess what your needs are in her needs analysis uh, process and obviously you are here to live you're here to learn in here to contribute and people like Cindy are more than happy to lend you a hand so that you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable now Cindy I can't thank you enough for your time your level of expertise and especially your story on the show today thank you so much thank you Prosper look forward to seeing you soon absolutely thank you so much